Yeah, that's right. I'm just wearing the baubles and the moustache today. We've got moustache decoration. This is neither irritating nor painful. Hello and welcome to day four of Kev's Window Wonderland. I'm Kev and as you can see, I am the new manager of Monaco. We've headed to France. My theory is Monaco should have a big pile of money for me to play with. I don't actually know if that's the case. They're always selling players though, aren't they? And plus, it's a rich place if they haven't got loads of money as a club. Hopefully some rich gentleman who's going there as a tax haven will be able to throw some money at them. Um, but we'll have a quick look at what we've got. As ever, if you're not familiar with the series, the idea is I'm going to do one transfer window and then see how we get on, see if we can do better than the AI would do without any transfer window. We've got a vacancy for director of football. That's interesting. Kev likes a director of football. Also, a tiny, tiny stadium um, and a media prediction of third. That feels low for Monaco. Um, this, is, this is the team. Um, there's a few... A few stars in there, ageing stars. Sask Fabregas, um, obviously in there, um, is a player that I am familiar with. Um, Glick was there when I did Monaco as my beta team like two or three years ago. So there's certainly a couple of names I'm going to recognise. The club are looking for me to sign high reputation players whilst also signing youngsters and bringing players through the club's youth system, which to me sounds like, Kev, sign everybody. Um, but they also want me to be, then be able to sell them on for a profit, which is hard with high reputation players. Um, and they want to become recognised as the best of the rest. That feels like a very unambitious position to want to be in as a football club. Um, let's just save this. We'll have a little look around the club. Then we are going to have a look to see how Monaco got on in my uh, in my holiday mode save to see what we've got to come up against, what we've got to beat. Um, but first, let's get an idea of what transfers have already gone on and how much money there is to spend. So they've sold £91 million worth of players, uh, most notably Yuri Tillemans for £39 million. That's a lot of money. Um, and plus a couple of other players for some big money as well. Congolo has gone to Huddersfield, um, Lopez to Sevilla. And they've spent £81 million, though, um, Gelson Martins coming in from uh, Atletico um, and a couple of other players that I'll level with you. I don't really know who they are. Um, I guess that's the point at Monaco, bringing players Kev's never heard of, turn them into players Kev has heard of as part of selling them as a profit. So that suggests there's probably not going to be a lot left in the kitty for old Kev. 20, 21 and a half million pounds, but nothing in the way of new wage budget suggests for us to bring in anyone significant we're probably going to have to sell to buy but it really depends on what is classed as something significant and how close to completion this squad already is because we might not need to do a huge amount of business it looks like Leon have been selling all the players this summer perhaps we should go and raid them they look like they've got some decent players knocking about in Leon. Um, if we have a little look at the team report to get an idea of where we need to strengthen um, so squad depth all positions um, we've got a couple of decent strikers, uh, Ben Yedda um, and Jovetic, both, I mean, they're, they're both very adequate strikers um, and still not too old to do a job for us. Does that mean he's on loan? Oh, he's on loan at Anderlecht. So our best left wing is not at the club, which seems like a bit of an oversight, um, but we do have plenty of depth in other positions around that kind of area. Quite a lot of decent talent in midfield. Does that mean he's here? Oh, he's on loan from Chelsea. Colour blindness is a pain in the backside. Um, and then it looks to me like defence is where we need to strengthen. We've got a couple of decent centre-backs, but they're not up to the level of the more attacking players. And fullback back wise um, we really are struggling because we've got some half-decent ones, but they're all out on loan at other clubs. Why have we loaned out all of our best defenders? So we need to go and sign some fullbacks. This this feels right up my street. Right, let's see how they got on without me. So this is the French League done without my involvement at all. Monaco finishing second, joint with Lyon on 70 points, but getting it just on goal difference. I mean, I would say already established as best of the rest there. There's going to be no competing with Paris Saint-Germain, certainly not in a first season, but it'll be interesting to see what transfers they did, if any, um, without me, so no one else. Oh no, they did bring in Ezekiel Palacios 
a midfielder, not what I'm planning on doing necessarily. Um, and then a couple of a couple of cheapo youngsters basically haven't really sold anyone else significant on either. So no fullbacks and no and no defenders at all. Just one midfield player who has. I mean, has he done a good job? Not really. Weird. We need to do better than that. How have they done in the... Presumably they're in the Champions League. Um, no Champions League? Wow. What position did they finish in the year before? Seven... What? What? Did Monaco finish 17th in the French League last year? And no one told me about it. That's mad. Okay. Let... That can't be right. I need to look that up. In the meantime, I'm going to go and do some transfers. Here we go then. Transfer window complete. And as you can see, I've been a busy boy with the two major transfers in the French League. We're also the biggest spenders. And our under-19 team signed lots of players. We did sign a lot of youngsters. But our two big signings, um, Tilo Kera, is that how you would say his name? 22-year-old German international, three-and-a-half-star current ability Five-star potential ability, centre-back, can also play right-back. Um, he comes for £5 million from Paris Saint-Germain, who spent £32.5 million on him the year before. I think that is a good piece of business. Um, we also signed Matthias Zaracho, who is a wide midfield player, central midfield player, basically anywhere in midfield. 21-year-old Argentinian international, three-and-a-half-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential ability. He's our best right-winger. He's equally best central midfielder. Not quite up to it as an attacking midfielder, but can play on the right wing as well. Um, and he comes in from Racing Club in Argentina. Um, those two signings for £5 million, I think, is a little bit of a bargain. The only other thing we did um, was bring in Phil Foden on loan from Manchester City. I know I did this with Ajax in the last episode, but he's the only decent player available for loan, and he's good. He's already got a goal and an assist. He's a handy player to bring in, and as you can see, we brought in lots of under-19 players. I gave my youth development man free reign to do what he wanted, and he did He did, did what he wanted. He did a lot. Um, so this is what our team report is looking like. Now, after uh, after bringing all of those players in, so you can see we've brought in the best centre back at the club, and we've brought in one of the best midfielders at the club, the best one of the best attacking midfielders at the club. There's still a lot of work to do. I did confirm they really did finish 17th last year. Who knew? I acknowledge you probably all knew. I didn't know though because I'm Kev and I don't pay attention to football. Um, so really anything anything better than Anything better than that is going to be an improvement. But obviously, we know we need to beat 70 points in a second-place finish, which is what the AI did. Um, we haven't had the best of starts, two defeats on the board already. And that was with me actually managing us. Let's see how we get on holiday in the rest of the season. Well, boys and girls, it looks like this is our first proper failure looking at the league table. I mean, to be fair, we finished on the same number of points as the AI, 70 points. But in this version of the world, 70 points was only enough to finish fourth. Paris Saint-Germain didn't dominate anywhere near as much in this world, presumably because we stole a defender off of them. Um, and Lyon and Marseille both had much better seasons. So points total identical. What a difference that can make, though. Difference between finishing second and Champions League qualification and finishing fourth and being in the Europa League. Let's have a look to see how our signings did get on. Um, it looks like there was a bit more, quite a lot more business, in fact, that was done in January. Although looking at it, it's a bunch more kids. My, I should never have given my youth development man position to, permission to do all that. Although it looks like he sold a few as well. He's just enjoying a bit of wheel of dealing, isn't he? But my signings, these are the ones that we're actually interested in. So Tilo Kera, um, he ended up playing 35 games. I mean, I think that makes him a good signing. 35 games played. Um, Zaracho ended up playing 31 games. Neither of them are really setting the world alight with their average ratings, but five goals, six assists, not too shabby for a £5 million signing. And Phil Foden, um, who is just, I mean, he would compare that to his performance against uh, uh, Ajax in yesterday's video. Still five goals, four assists, but average rating wise, I think that's the problem. We, we just don't seem to have any stars. Okay. The the ones that the guy before me signed with the stars. 
I understand. Well, at least I didn't get sacked. Still 100% no sackings in this series so far. But we do need to we need to have a big win at some point. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.